As a woman pursuing a career in directing myself, I admire Greta Gerwig and how she is able to be so successful despite the many roadblocks that come with working in a male-dominated field. Despite her first directorial, or rather co-directorial, debut being all the way back in 2008 with Nights and Weekends, Gerwig has seemingly skyrocketed in popularity after her extreme success with Lady Bird back in 2017. This was the first of Gerwig's three films that I had ever seen, and I immediately knew she was special. Her artistic voice is so distinct through her films, and her choices are always so intentional. More recently, Gerwig's adaptation of Little Women is giving the other seven adaptations a run for their money with her extreme creativity and innovations to the classic novel. Two out of three receiving Oscar nominations? Not too shabby. One thing I admire about Gerwig is the fact that she has only ever directed films that she has written. Oftentimes, I think it can be easier for the writer of a script to also direct the film itself, seeing as they know the exact vision they had when they were writing it. While Little Women was technically adapted, Gerwig still made it her own and changed just enough to make it feel like a completely different story compared to past adaptations. Lady Bird and Nights and Weekends were both original screenplays, and I can't imagine bringing in another director to try and tell these stories. Gerwig's vision is so clear and precise, it would be weird to have a completely different party trying to showcase her voice. Gerwig's many talents give her a great advantage in making any film. In addition to being a writer, she was an actress herself prior to her major directorial debuts and continues to act even now. Because of this, I think she has an incredible way of directing her actors that they will better understand. This is both beneficial for the actors as well as the film as a whole. It takes pressure off of the actors, which in turn takes pressure off the rest of the crew when trying to film more difficult scenes. Directing for the camera can be incredibly difficult especially for someone who isn't familiar with the acting process in the first place. Currently, Gerwig has acted in over 35 films and TV shows, so she really knows her stuff. In Gerwig's two most popular films, she has also chosen to cast two recurring actors, Saoirse Ronan and Timothy Chalamet. Other directors are also known for reusing actors, such as Martin Scorsese with Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, or Quentin Tarantino with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. I really like this idea of a director growing closer to their actors and building a bond in which they not only work together, but grow together as well. It makes Gerwig's films specifically feel all the more personal and intimate knowing how much she truly cares and knows her actors, almost like a family. Even on the small scale of my own student films, there are definitely a handful of actors I feel more comfortable working with and feel closer to, and therefore will better the story I'm trying to tell. Gerwig is also able to create her own unique world through the stories that she writes and brings to life on screen through her directing. Little Women is no exception. The cinematic adaptation of Louisa May Alcott's novel has been made seven times before Gerwig's. How can it be any different and why is it even necessary? Gerwig has made this 150 year old novel something that could easily apply to everyday life in 2020. It is a feminist story for men and women of all ages and all walks of life. These characters feel real and vulnerable, not stiff and boring like in past adaptations. Even the blocking used for these actors subconsciously makes us feel more connected to them, especially between Joe and Lori. These two are best friends and we don't have to do anything but watch them interact to understand that. Their playful interactions and childlike foolishness just create such a wonderful feeling of bliss and joy. Four sisters are always holding on to each other and playing together, which is so much more accurate for how families are in real life. In my experiences at least, most period pieces I've seen feel stuffy and impersonal. No one really feels human. Everything feels so formal or forced, it's hard to relate to any character. Characters' movements seem odd or unnatural, it's difficult to understand their real feelings. But today, it is so hard not to relate to any of Gerwig's adaptations of these beloved characters. Another thing I admire about Gerwig is how incredibly intentional she is with every little detail of her films. For example, you'll notice that in Little Women, each March sister has her own color. Joe is red, Amy is blue, Meg is green, and Beth is purple. Costuming alone, Gerwig is so conscious of these characters and their relationships to one another. 
which is why you'll also notice that their mother's clothes almost always incorporate a little bit of each color, since each girl is a direct part of her. Now, other scenes, it may not be all four colors. For example, when Marmee and Joe are discussing Joe's guilt about Amy, Marmee wears a red shirt and a blue skirt, symbolizing both daughters. It may not be obvious to the general viewer, but once you know, it's hard not to notice. Another thing Gerwig is extremely intentional with in Little Women is time. Much unlike past adaptations of the novel, Gerwig chooses not to tell the story chronologically. However, she distinguishes this to the viewer by having warmer tones prevalent during what is deemed as the past or childhood and cooler tones during the present or adulthood. Gerwig explains how the warmer tones reflect how we often look back on our own childhoods with rose-colored glasses. Like there is a certain indescribable quality that just makes us feel warm, as contrasted to the coldness we feel when we are forced to leave childhood memories and start living as adults. My favorite example of this is the golden hue around the March sisters on Christmas Day when their father returns home from battle, and then the cool tones of the family taking care of Beth while she is ill. I could go on for days about the subtleties throughout Little Women, but I'll continue on with Lady Bird and Nights and Weekends. On paper, a coming-of-age film like Lady Bird may seem like nothing special, but the way Gerwig encapsulates the realistic struggle between mother and daughter and the overall struggles of your senior year of high school, it only leaves you wanting more. Early on in the film, we see Lady Bird and her mother driving together, both looking displeased. Lady Bird herself even chooses to throw herself out of the car to get away from her mother and her pressing questions. She won't even go by the name her mother gave her. We are introduced to their complicated relationship right away. As the film progresses and we get to the end, we are shown a beautiful scene intercutting between Lady Bird driving by herself through Sacramento and her mother driving alone. It's not until they are apart that we see how much they truly care for one another. This ability to drive alone is a symbol of independence for Lady Bird. It's what she's always wanted. But it is also a symbol of loss for her mother, despite her earlier actions pointing to her desire for Lady Bird to be gone. We now see it was only a guard she put up so Lady Bird couldn't hurt her. It is no longer a shared experience between the two. Nights and Weekends is sort of the odd duck of Gerwig's films. It's not very popular. In fact, the only way I could watch this was by purchasing the DVD, and even then, there weren't many made in the first place. It is very different than her two other films which would explain her popularity starting after the fact. Perhaps co-directing, co-writing, co-starring, and co-producing was simply too much for the film to turn out as successful as Lady Bird or Little Women. Nonetheless, Gerwig still makes choices in this film that exemplify her eye for detail. One strong aspect of this film is the dialogue. Characters often noticeably mess up their lines or have to repeat parts of sentences after getting tongue-tied, but I think this is an incredible stylistic choice. It truly mirrors how anyone would actually speak in real life. It makes the audience feel like we're watching actual events unfold naturally. Gerwig also chooses not to have any music playing throughout the entire film, not even in the opening or closing credits. This again adds to the realness of the situation between Maddie and James. This film is truly raw and real. As an empowered woman herself, it is no wonder that Gerwig chooses to tell stories of other empowered women that will in turn empower the women who watch them. Gerwig gives us the incredibly individualistic Lady Bird, the powerful March sisters, and the strong Maddie. In a predominantly patriarchal society, it's nice to see more female-centric films. Greta Gerwig uses her talents and abilities to pave a way for other aspiring female filmmakers to help break this mold and tell their own unique stories.